19 minutes past the hour of six o'clock in Trinidad and Tobago. And up next, we're talk taking you into the future of the public service. It's time to learn more about some innovation right here on Spotlights. Welcome to it. We are very happy to be speaking with Senator Dominic Alexander-Smith, Minister of Public Administration and Artificial Intelligence, as well as Dr. Inshan Majon, CEO of the National Information and Communication Technology Company Limited, IGOV TT. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Welcome. And even before we get into the, the meat of the matter, uh, we're hearing good things about you, Minister, in terms of very passionate about the about what it is you have at the task at hand, always engaging with technocrats like Dr. Mejon. Uh, what is the thing that gets you most excited about the ministry at this point in time? I think, um, well, first of all, uh, thank you for, for welcoming me so warmly this morning. I know it's Monday morning, bright and early, as they say, uh, but I really appreciate the courtesy of yourself and your staff. Um, and of course, good morning to your viewing public. Um, for me, I, I think um, I think the the gist of it really resides in the base of why we're here. You know, what what makes a politician uh, different from the average citizen? And it's really you're wearing a cap, um, but that cap really um, it comes from serving the public. You know, you're here because you have a contract with the public who have entrusted you um, with the opportunity to serve. And so everything that you're, you're driven to do really has to come from um, the basic intrinsic need of how do I help my fellow man, how do I help my citizens. So um, coming into this ministry, I've always said my main focus would be treating um, every service that we provide as if I am the recipient. And in so doing, everyone can certainly benefit from um, the self-interest aspect of it. But overall, the general society will also benefit with that approach. And I hear there's some things that the, the nation is going to benefit from momentarily. So give us a little, give us a little idea about it, thanks. Well, as you say, I don't want to buy cut and bag, but the, the reality is that we, we've been um, pushing three main pillars. Uh, one is uh, digital government. Um, a digital society um, and, and certainly a digital economy uh, and those are really the the, the basics of uh, how we're trying to transform both the public service and uh, when you think about the public service it's both internal and external so we have internal customers you have the public servants who are working hard to um, improve the services and the efficiency uh, within the public service and then you have the external customers who are you know the man on the ground how can we make their lives easier how can we um, relieve the stress so to speak, as they engage with the public sector and with public services that you know typically take a long time, uh, they may cost money, there may be a, a bit of duplication of effort. So we're really focused on how do we align those pieces um, in a way that every citizen can benefit and truly, truly benefit. Dr. Mejian, looking from the perspective of IGOV TT, how do some of these issues look like from or from the viewpoint of the person who doesn't have an idea of the inner workings, what it is you're trying to do, what is going into what is going in, into the bag to be released to the public. So Minister, Minister laid out um, a fantastic vision. And since taking control of the ministry, he was very passionate and clear about citizen service and delivery. So at IGOV TT, and a lot of the viewers may not know, we are inextricably linked into the digital fabric of this country. So very quickly, we um, managed 218 million in procurement, 275 million in projects. We manage over 25,000 users on a wide area network. And one of the things that we were tasked when the minister took charge was to improve the lives of citizens. And you know, the one thing that you have that everybody um, treasures is time. And the solution that we are going to be launching tomorrow saves a lot of time for citizens. All right, so we're starting <laughs> to get a little closer to it. So we know that it launches tomorrow. We know that it's going to be helping with saving time. Um, but how does it do that? So just imagine um, you're a citizen. You want to learn something about government. You want to apply for something. It's very difficult. You have to go through the net. It's literally that, right, a net. And there is no single 
sign on or single front door to government. And this solution is that. <laughs> Many times you go onto a website, we see in chatbots, we see in these kind of things that are to help to onboard before you get to some uh, a human spe specifically talking about your need. Looking at the fact that the AI in the ministry stands for artificial intelligence, is this part of the solution, Minister? Well, I, I, I will say that um, you know, the, the main focus is to really tackle the pain points. And um, AI <laughs> uh, is a, a tool um, that it allows us to, to break free of pain points. And I can say that this would be one of the first of many AI-based initiatives that will aim to tackle and alleviate, I would dare say, some of the challenges that the citizens face. So um, as uh, Inchan would have highlighted or um, hinted to, um, you know, typically the, the ministries of, of, let's say, ICT in the past have always been on the background. Um, citizens aren't aware of how do they really benefit from this ministry. And I think it's, it's really crucial when we talk about social contract citizens must be able to look at every single ministry and say, hey, I'm benefiting in X way because there's a, there's a, um, uh, the fact is, is that monies are allocated and they, they must be efficiently allocated. It's our responsibility that people feel um, included in that process. So this is the first of many AI initiatives. Um, and I would say AI is a, is a enabler, it's a tool. Um, it is not replacement, it is an augmentation. So I'm very happy that this will be one of many to come um, in the coming year, in 2025. So citizens, look out, <laughs> good things coming. I smile with some of the words used in the sense that one, AI as an enabler, and two, citizens can feel included. Answer the person, Dr. Mejon, who hears AI and says, but wait, not just going to take my work. Absolutely not. So AI is an enabler, Minister indicated that, and really it's to help you. AI has been around for 30 years and has been automating tasks for citizens, for the public for a long time, but you were just not aware of that. In this particular solution, we are also using HI, human intelligence. So um, the current agents that we have for the last 18 months has solved 14,400 queries from the public. That solution is also added to the AI. So it's AI plus HI, which puts us above any other solution that exists. No, you're saying that, and I'm thinking sometimes it, I can see the potential for work that the ministry does to not be seen one or not be seen under that ministry or your ministry because of the way that it will have to reach into every every ministry, all, all hands on deck approach. But how does it fit into government's wider plan for this sort of transformation? I think, um, I think if you look, at, um, you look at the economies that have done well and that have implemented AI um, at the highest level, you look at uh, Dubai, you look at the UAE, or you look at Singapore, um, they have a principle where you sort of silo or you buy once, you share many times. And that's a common concept in, um, in ICT. Uh, you'd find that a lot of ministries and MDAs, uh, they, they're sort of doing their own purchasing, they're doing their own activity, but it's not centralized. And so there's a lot of wastage um, as a result of that. What this allows us to do now is to use the technology to centralize services and then distribute. Um, and I think that is the next wave of efficiency that the public service will see. Um, just to touch on, on the concept of um, you know, what Inchen would have mentioned, um, you might lose your work. If you look at the Industrial Revolution, the Industrial Revolution was seen initially with a bit of anxiety by the population. Right? And so what the, the reality is, however, is that the Industrial Revolution created many industries and many jobs. And people need to take into consideration as well that this is not um, a revolution that we can escape. Uh, this is something that's happening. It's more a matter of will you be at the forefront of the participation or will you be left behind? Our government has, has made it uh, into a ministry, so we have a level of focus and intention behind the ministry. And so we believe that it will, one, 
transform the way in which we do work, but also improve and increase opportunities for people in the labor market. So it's certainly not a separation. It's a, it's a, you know, a joining of efforts, and it's it's being very intentional in the, the way in which we use the technology. How do you bring intention to individuals who are used to a different paradigm? Some people, it feels as though they're born with a, a phone in their hands. Some people are still used to using Blackboard with chalk. Yes. Some people want to go into the bank to deposit or to withdraw or to move money. Uh, is there a m method of hand-holding, scaffolding information and capacity around individuals? How do you make that transition for people who, this is not their first mode of being in terms of being uh, accurate with the technology? I, I think, I think the, the foundation is you give people the opportunity to make that decision on their own. You know, um, a lot of the times I've seen, even in my own experience, um, let's say the, the elder, elder population, uh, you'd be surprised how um, how rich an opportunity it is for them to interact with technology if you give them the opportunity to do so. I would say it's 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 more the outliers that are very hesitant in terms of using the technology. I mean, I'm sure you receive um, a hello, good morning from you know your many WhatsApp groups. This Holy morning, for right? so, and sort of so certainly there is a there's a there's a challenge, yes. Um, but uh, on a more serious note, the government is also committed to um, upskilling and retooling the public service. It's not to say that we don't have a plan surrounding how do we develop the human capital. Um, and, and there's a unit specifically in uh, the Ministry of Public Admin. It's called the, the PSA, not, not to be confused with the union. It is the Public Service Academy. And that unit is sort of um, charged with the responsibility to bring what we, what we, what we will term um, you know, internal transformation or change management, as the HR professionals call it. And that's really part of the tapestry of what we're trying to achieve. Um, it's more about how do we, as I said, include people in the conversation, give them the opportunity to, to retrain and upskill. And, and certainly, I think a big component of what I'm trying to accomplish is that technology often happens and, and persons in, in disparate communities are left behind. Everyone must be able to partake in digital empowerment. And so we're talking about the guy down in Toko, we're talking about the guy in Signal Hill, we're talking about the mother who doesn't have to pay $100 to go from Sandy Grandy to Port of Spain to pay a bill. She could simply go online and pay for it there. And that money could then be used to, you know, eat some lunch, you know what I mean? So it's simple things. How will we make simple things and allow persons to not feel the burden that, you know, it's quite unnecessary at times? And I like the fact that you started the conversation, Minister, with a level of self-interest and trying to scale that out, what's in it for me, and bringing that so people can say that. I'll ask you that as well, Dr. Mejon, in terms of the single most important change that this solution will be bringing to the public of Trinidad and Tobago. It's a simple, single, digital front door to government information. That has never been done before under this ministry and this minister will be launched tomorrow. And that really sounds exciting. In the last minute that we have, Minister, we always want a little more, <laughs> like Oliver Twist. So this is being launched tomorrow, please God. What is the next step? I think the next step is for, for us to um, welcome the public. Um, you know, come in. A lot of the times, the initiatives of the government, they aren't amplified sufficiently. So a lot of the times, the question is, but I didn't know I could get this. I didn't know I could get that. So, and that's in part, it's it's a it's a it's a job of the citizen to be looking for solutions that benefit them. But it's also responsibility of the government to make sure that they, you could actually access this. This is a place where you can go. The benefit of the technology, however, is that. You don't have to go and look for X, Y, Z on, on this website, and then it redirecting it to that website. Let's make it easy as possible for the citizen. That's our job, you know. So I think that is what the citizens can look forward to. And um, you know, he mentioned this one one portal entry. This is the first of many, many what we call an IT sprints, and we'll be sprinting along in the Ministry of Public Admin and Artificial Intelligence. And I welcome the public on the journey with us. It's going to be flexible. And I ask that because, you know, sometimes we, we sprint and we reach a certain place and we realize, okay, we have another <laughs> sprint that we need to do. That, that, yeah, that's, that's basically what the sprints are. So when you make a sprint, you make the changes on the go. So absolutely. All right. And with that, we want to thank you very much, gentlemen. Minister Dominic Smith, Minister of Public Admin and Artificial Intelligence, as well as the CEO of iGovTT, Dr. Injun Amejon. 
Thank you very much. Looking forward to the launch tomorrow and we see where we're sprinting to next. Yes. <laughs> uh, but what we are going to do at this point in time, we, we'll walk, we won't sprint, but we take a break. The Now Morning Show, it continues after this. Stay with us.